So, you've decided to get into espionage fiction, which is my favorite genre. Now, I, I know that, that other people really like fantasy, really like science fiction. I love these genres as well. But my favorite genre is espionage fiction. It means spies. Now, you want to get into espionage fiction for a variety of reasons. Maybe you want to just dabble in the craft a little bit. Maybe you want to actually experiment with writing a book. At the end of this video, I'm going to tell you the one book you should get if you just want one book. But I'm going to talk about a lot of books before that. As a primer into the craft of espionage fiction, we have Tom Clancy. Tom Clancy. Tom Clancy. Tom Clancy. Tom fucking Clancy. Now, Tom Clancy is your staple food group. He's, he's like bread. Your bread and butter. He's the spy writer. Focus on Tom Clancy. Tom Clancy is not Tom Clancy's. Tom Clancy wrote this book. Tom Clancy did not write this book. This book has an apostrophe S right here, written by David Michaels down there. Now, Tom Clancy wrote this book. Tom Clancy. Tom Clancy. Tom Clancy's not on the back of this book because Tom Clancy didn't write this book. This is Tom Clancy's brand all over the Xbox. I don't know if you noticed that, but Splinter Cell, Ghost Recon, Rainbow Six, all of these books are Tom Clancy's ideas. This guy had ideas, lots of ideas in that brain of his, and he knew that the next medium was video games. So he wrote basic outlines of books, handed them off to other writers to actually complete and write and carry on the legacy of. Tom Clancy, Tom Clancy followed one of three characters throughout the, the majority of his career. His biggest character was named Jack Ryan. Now, Rainbow Six is an actual Tom Clancy novel that was turned into a video game. That's part of the Jack Ryan world, but Rainbow Six follows a character named John Clark. We say Tom Clancy's and Tom Clancy, but now Tom Clancy's getting fucking old. Look at him right there. He's fucking old. So he hires on other writers, specifically Mark Greeny and Grant Blackwood, to write with him. You see Mark Greeny right there. Mark Greeny wrote this book with Tom Clancy. Now this book is amazing. Tom Clancy just was starting to run out of time and he knew he was running out of time. Look at his fucking old face right there. Look at how old that face is. He knew he was gonna croak one day and fucking die and then he fucking did. So what happened next? Now instead of writing Tom Clancy's we have another Tom Clancy but this one is entirely by Mark fucking Greeny because Tom Clancy even though he's on the back of the fucking book he's fucking dead. I did not realize it until I was looking through my books, but I have two paperback editions of this book. I'm gonna probably get rid of this one because it's bigger and bulkier, harder to carry around. This author, John Le Carre, is smooth fucking reading criminal book. He's amazing. I can't tell you how much respect in the intelligence community they have for this guy and this guy this guy this guy Tom Clancy's American John Le Carre's British not his real name Tom Clancy is his real name not his real name his name wasn't actually John Le Carre but who gives a shit this guy now, as you'll notice, this one was turned into a movie as well. And the problem, if it is a problem with you, the problem is that a lot of John Le Carre's books actually have become movies or TV shows. Whereas with Tom Clancy, he's got more books that haven't been movies than he has books that have been movies, even though he has so many books that have been movies. This guy has a lot of books that are amazing but they've also been turned into amazing movies and amazing TV shows. And if that's a problem for you, if, if you can't keep the mediums in your head, then 
maybe just read the fucking book because it's so much better. There's so much more twists of words, but it's simple prose. That's the idea. With most of these novels, simple prose. Robert Harris. Now, as you'll notice, this one has also become a movie with Benedict Cumberbatch. Great movie. A lot of Robert Harris's uh, books have become movies. So if that's a problem for you, read the fucking books because they're really good. They're really fucking good. This is a really fucking good book. Read it. This guy also happened to write the book that was adapted into my favorite film of all time. Unfortunately, and actually unfortunately, the movie of which was called The Ghost Rider in America, and in Britain is called The Ghost, because in Britain they call ghost writers, they call them ghosts. Um, it was directed by a controversial director. And I'm gonna leave it there. Just gonna say it's got Ewan McGregor in it. Great actor, great movie. Controversial director. You might be here to actually write about espionage. You want to write an espionage book, a spy book. I got you covered. The first thing you gotta do is learn. Because spies, if you weren't aware of this, spies are some of the smartest people on the fucking planet. And they know a lot of things. Maybe you're gonna learn a new language before you get into the mind space, the head space of your spy. Learn a new language. Get down to the nitty gritty of that language. It doesn't matter what it is. Spies know a lot of different languages, but try learning one. Get onto Duolingo, get one of these little pocket guides, get a language in your fucking noggin. Now you really wanna get into a mind space of a spy, you gotta get into philosophy. Now Machiavelli is gonna be carried around in the head of most of these guys. They carry this around, passages of this book around in their head every day. They probably know passages of Machiavelli by heart. Why? Well, let's consider the people who started the CIA. Most of them were from Yale, and they were from a special group at Yale called the Skull and Bones. It's a little after-school club. These guys are smart. They go to Yale, Oxford, Harvard, Cambridge, Trinity. These guys and girls now they know their shit. They know Machiavelli. They know Plato. They know Socrates. So if you want to get into the mind space of a spy, get into the mind space of philosophers. Not just Western philosophers, but also this is my pocket edition of The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Eastern philosophy, Confucianism, Sun Tzu, Sun Tzu, Sun Tzu. Get this one into your fucking noggin. Now, this one is really short. The Art of War is not a big book, but everyone talks about it because it's just densely packed. You got a lot of information in a little small space. Probe him. Know his strengths and weaknesses. The highest skill in forming dispositions is to be without form. Formlessness is proof against the prying of the subtlest spy and the machinations of the wisest brain. Read The Art of War. I, I, I guarantee you, you're gonna get closer to the mind space of your spy if you read this. Just read as much philosophy as you can cross. Hannah Arden's Origins of Totalitarianism. This book is the only philosophy book worth reading if you want to know how dictators operate. And if you're getting into the mind space of a spy, you need to know about dictatorships because a lot of spies actually work for dictatorships. Maybe they don't realize it. Maybe they're one of the invisible people. You're gonna get into that. Get into this. Get into this. This book. Read this. If you want to get into this genre, read this. This is philosophy. It's not spies. It's not espionage, but it is important if you want to know this genre inside out. 
Now, maybe you're dumb in other areas. Maybe you don't know a whole lot about a whole lot. So, you're gonna wanna read primers. Read primers about the things that you are looking at. You know, you wanna get into a, a character who's working in the back end of a website. You wanna know the jargon. Jargon is important. Jargon is really critical. You wanna know how a, a basic computer system works. You wanna know how to protect yourself, especially. Let's say you know nothing about weapons at all. Nothing about weapons. Small Arms Visual Encyclopedia. This book by Martin J. Daugherty is just beautiful. Look at it. it it's a little visual. Y you can see everything. And it's got the little specs on the side. It's got the dates they were made. It's got categories. Even if you're an American and you fire lots of guns, like myself, I've probably fired 10% of the weapons that are in this book in my military career. A lot of these weapons don't actually exist anymore, so maybe you don't even know them. Because they, they're not... They, they, Yugoslavia made its own weapon. Yeah, because they were a communist country, of course. They had a manufacturing center, so of course they were making guns. You're gonna be writing espionage you want to know what other spies have done to actually fuck up because this book here famous soviet spies the opening passage very important it says these are the spies that we know about indicating they weren't very good at their job because they got caught the time period let's say doesn't have to be the soviet union it could be 2014 and i suggest this for anyone writing any genre at all if you're writing characters in a particular year, f take a flip through a world almanac. Everything that was important that year. Maybe you want to take your characters somewhere. Maybe you've never been to that place that you're writing about before. You've never been to Mexico. You should go there. If you can, get to the place that you're writing about. But if you can't, if you can't afford it, books are about the imagination. As much research as you can do. And Lonely Planet is probably my top recommendation because they actually show you places that your characters would probably visit. The, the places that foreigners usually go are gonna be in tourist guides. The difference between spies and agents is actually very critical. A lot of people confuse the terms interchangeably. So pick up the Dictionary of Espionage and Intelligence by Bob Burton. This book will explain to you the difference between an officer and an agent. You want to know history. 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 I, I don't just mean the history of a particular revolution which this book is very important read it if you haven't if you're gonna be writing anything about irish independence take a look at 1916. now there's other books about independence narrative because those narratives are what inspire and fill somebody with pride and make them go and do what they're doing. Read about the story of the foundations of their country. If you really want to get into why somebody would have national pride, focus on the feeling of national pride because national pride is what makes the difference between a traitor and a true patriot, a true spy, somebody who really really believes in what they're doing. And then you have changes in history. The expulsion of the Jesuits from Latin America by Magnus Morner describes how the Jesuits are expulsed from Latin America. It's pretty straightforward. Wow. Now you want to know a little bit about what happens when we catch spies. Your spy novel might actually become a crime novel. And there's nothing wrong with that. There is a lot of crossover between spy fiction and crime fiction. In fact, spies in every country in the world, espionage is illegal. I don't know if you knew this, but in every single country in the world, 
espionage by foreign intelligence operators is illegal. So somebody like Sir Harold Scott here is going to have to arrest them and then they're going to take him in for booking. And this book, he's talking about x-rays and he's talking about, now this book was, was written in 1954, this book. This book is a, a piece of history that's developing. We all know these from CSI, but in 1954, this was, what the hell is that? You're telling me this is on my finger? Oh my God, you're right. I can see it. I can see my outer terminus and my open delta. <sighs> you might notice that the camera just slightly shifted and the sun just came out. Well, I didn't know that my camera had a 30 minute record limit. If you want to analyze the fever that happened around the 2016 election, and it's important that everyone who wants to study, analyze, read, and or write about espionage gets into how the Russians actually did manage to infiltrate this country. This guy is a dedicated FBI official. He, he's dedicated to the truth. This is no political slant here. This is an FBI agent wrote this as an official report. Go out and find a copy of it and see what you think from the actual words in this report. Now, this is written by the FBI and if you want something that's written by the Senate or the House, I definitely suggest one of these. These books represent what the House and the Senate of the United States of America can do when they actually accomplish their fucking jobs. The 9-11 Commission Report is everything that we understand about what happened on 9-11 and it was written within the year after that tragic event. To understand what we were doing at this time why 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 it all happened why the fuck did it happen here's this one this is called the warren report and this is the actual story about who killed jfk this one here is called the torture report and the problem with the torture report is that those, those books there were produced for mass paperback and, and the hardback mass market uh, consumption. And so you can actually find versions of most of the House and Senate reports and commissions, the important ones that are published like that. This one I had to pull from a PDF. I don't know if they're actually making it uh, these days in, in paperback or hardback, but this one I printed off actually in 2014 because this is when the declassification revisions happened but it, it talks about the classifications it, when you open it up it, it what the fuck is this this uh, it's still redacted what the fuck is this look at this what the fuck is this look look at that but it's still great. You read around the story, you get to figure out who we actually tortured, why we tortured them, and how stupid torture fucking is. You can't get rid of how much you can learn. I'd go into some primer in psychology like the psychology book. It's got your basic psychologists. Big Ideas, Simply Explained, by DK, DK.com, great book, some, uh, some science book, science book, same publisher, DK.com, book, the science book, big, I, big book, more knowledge, 
Who is your spy? What is their background? Were they in the SAS? If so, read about some of the operations that they may have gone on. Yada yada yada, Spetsnaz and all that shit. Army smart book. If your person's in the army, or replace this with the Navy smart book or the Marine smart book. If they're in the service and you don't want to go through the trouble of trying to pass basic training, the intelligence process this is the most important section because there is an entire branch within the military called military intelligence and we have this organization called the dia as opposed to the cia the dia is called the defense intelligence agency take a look at some of the stories that soldiers and and sailors and airmen marines tell great one hunter killer true story this is about this drone here is actually called a hunter killer drone now we have a hunter killer drone we also have a hunter killer submarine death from above Ricondo. now i had to make my own cover because i don't know what the fuck happened to the cover of this book but this is a very special moment in history that will never be repeated again because the 5th Special Forces uh, Regiment had their own special school set up in Vietnam, which was a war zone. So they were training soldiers how to fight in an active combat situation, which is just... Recondo. Really, really really intense Legionnaire now this book is five years in the French Foreign Legion and because it's got this little center section with the pictures you know this actually happened my pictures are kind of falling out so here we go um, there you see three cups of tea no explanation needed great fucking book if you haven't heard of it pick it up three cups of tea is one man's mission to promote peace one school at a time some people really like peace inside a u.s embassy how uh diplomats are working my jihad might sound at the offset like uh what the fuck why would I ever read a book called that? Jihad is bad, right? Not necessarily. Because if you actually take Jihad and you come to the terms of understanding what Jihad actually means, you realize that somebody working for the FBI going undercover and infiltrating Al-Qaeda is on a jihad. He's on a jihad because he's going to the aid of Muslims in trouble overseas. And the Muslims who are in trouble are the ones who are being attacked and oppressed by people who claim to be on a jihad, which is like, pfft, wow. Permanent record. If you don't know what this book is, or who that guy is, I'm, I'm sorry. This is his side of the story, okay? Everyone has their own side of the story. I know that you're gonna have your own political opinion about this guy and whether he should be pardoned, whether he shouldn't. Of course, in this book, he's arguing, please uh, fucking pardon me or just give me a fair shot, you know? Of course he's gonna be saying that because it's him. He doesn't wanna fucking get killed. Uh, again, if you haven't heard of this, where have you been? Another director of the CIA, Bob Gates, somebody that I've actually met. I've met a few of these people actually. The Berlin Diary. This book I'm actually really proud of, of the fact that I actually own it, because if you see down here, 1934 to 1941, this is about 
that era of history, but it, it was published in 1941 as well. Zolar's an encyclopedia of ancient and forbidden knowledge. Pick this up so you can understand what the nutcases are talking about. The Iliad by Homer. Midget Ninja and Tactical Laxatives. I love this book. <laughs> I love this book by Phillips. <laughs> no, this book. <laughs> Look at the cover. <laughs> if you're not much of a reader, I hate to say it, but I own a graphic novel. I don't really read graphic novels, but I own this. And it's fucking incredible. Your spies are gonna have read most often one of these two books or many, many, many deviations thereof. The Bible or the Quran. I know. I know. But if you read them, if you really want to get into your characters' heads, just think of them as fairy tales. And it'll go a lot easier. I'm not going to throw these books because um, some people get a little angry when, when you kind of like throw their book around and like I'm just gonna set them down gently over here. Okay, I'm right. Just, just gently set it down. No damage done. If you are in the West, and if your spy is in the West, and when I say the West, I mean anything west of the Caucasus Mountains. So, that being Western Russia, which is in the west, and the Baltics, and Bosnia, Sarajevo, Greece, Turkey, Lebanon, Israel, any of these western countries, Morocco, um, Spain, Algeria, uh, Egypt, any of these Western countries, America, Mexico, Peru, Brazil, Canada, any of these Western countries, you know, like, um, like, yeah, Yemen sometimes, any of the Western countries, just, just west of the Caucasus Mountains, then you're probably gonna have read Don Quixote. Your spy, your character, your dude, your chick, your bitch, your dick is gonna have read this book. Now, I said at the beginning of this video that I have one book that if you're interested in writing or reading espionage and you just want to read one book The Company by Robert Little really deep uh, works with existing source information from the CIA historians and he weaves them in to, to the, this book. There is an excellent version on Audible. It's a very different experience. The narration just, just, just molds it all together in a cohesive narrative that is bar none brilliant. And, and uh, so yeah. 
that is the last book. And once you do all that, now you're ready to get into the genre.